would help to the process to the speech and language therapist really for reviews on technology as it changes all the time. Let's show them the world we do we do all the things that we can practice, rehearsal, concert. Oh my god. How Future technology. I would like it to read my mind and predict answers based on my regular scenes. Hello, Phoebe. Hi. You're pausing. Assistive technology has enabled me to have a voice. I can also go on the internet, which I couldn't do before. Um, so Phoebe uses her headrest, her head to type. So when she wants to say something, she uses her eyes. That's so, right. Yeah, that's right. So she uses more of an eye gaze to type whatever message that she wants to, to say or communicate. And when she's driving, do you want to show us when, how you drive, Phoebe? It's almost the same technique. So she uses her hand to reach for her control, her arm, actually. And then she'll use her head for the controlling of everything else. Lots I can't use any bank because I can't use a phone myself. This takeaway is my independence. I would like a mobile phone that is eye gaze. Also, I would like something that says what I am thinking. So this is Phoebe's buzzer. When she's here in the flood kitchen and she needs to use a buzzer, she tells me which side she wants it. We want it on you. Okay. So she wants it on herself. So I'll put it here on your lap. So do you mind buzzing, please? Right, so when she's buzzing, it also reflects on my phone and I go to her room to cancel the buzzer. So when I cancel the buzzer, it simply means that someone is in her room and attending to her, to her needs. So Phoebe is actually currently attached at Dementia Alton Friendly. Is it the correct name? Or oh, I usually exchange it. Dementia Friendly Alton. So where she goes there every Mondays uh, between 10 and 2 o'clock. So basically when she gets there where the elderly are with dementia and some are volunteers there so she's a volunteer she's one of the volunteers we go there every Monday Phoebe has this uh, particular lady who is a friend she actually gets excited when we talk about her so she normally helps that lady with whatever assigned task that she has funny she is very funny right mm -hmm. yeah she likes it because that lady is funny I am unable to use my computer outside because it stops the eye gaze working. For my school, I think they can make things like this cheaper. Hello, my name is Sahira Khan. I am a freelance artist and creative. I'm married and I have two children. My eldest daughter is hearing and my youngest son, uh, he is with Down syndrome and he is four years old. So I use my iPhone laptop and I use this every day. So with my iPhone, I use this for messaging, using remote services. So for example, um, I'll have an appointment with a GP and I need to explain physical elements about my son's health. So it's more visual when it's face to face. But if I've gone to the hospital for an audiology, then I could use the remote services. I may not need an interpreter, but if it's linked to a physical check or anything linked to physical health, then I would use remote. So I think it really depends on the situation. The big barrier is when there's no Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi connection or I have no data. That's really difficult to access anything. And that's what I need. I might not have insurance for my iPhone or my laptop and if it is damaged or broken I know it's quite expensive to get this repaired. Also to use the remote services you have to pay for that and that can be expensive as well. I think it would be amazing if the deaf person could create the technology 
because they would know what to look for. They know what the perspective is. If it's a hearing person creating the technology, the hearing person needs to understand what are the needs of the deaf people, what are the access needs. You know, I've always imagined if I was stranded on an island, what would I do if I didn't have technology to support? So my awareness with iPhones and access is through the deaf community. So through the deaf clubs or through family members, deaf friends, they might mention about this new technology. I'm like, oh, that's really you know, interesting. Sometimes in the community, you know, we'd share information about apps. So for example, about sign video and sign live, people will share that around or different remote services, just general, if there's any new information we, we share amongst ourselves. How digital assistive technology has made a big impact in my life. Uh, I would argue it's the other way around. The, the less I notice uh, the digital assistive technology, uh, the better. And it's so integrated into my life, I don't really notice it. In the sense, so I just do my emails or I just do my meeting. I only really notice the technology when it doesn't work. And like all technology, it has its moments. Swipe up. Swipe up. Without the digital assistive technology, my day would look very different. Um, from literally the first thing I do is turn my lights on with uh, my Alexa. At school, tech was seen as like this silver bullet for my education and that all my problems are going to be sorted by just using this new computer program. I had like a writing session at school when I was at primary. We'd do it every morning. It was like two hours of writing. I'd have to write a story or we'd have to write a newspaper article or whatever the thing was. And they'd want me to use uh, their latest, whatever the program was called at that time. I wanted to write as much as everyone else. I'm perfectly capable of verbalising a full a falling story, but on this computer, I couldn't write enough. I was so slow, and then I'd get told off for not writing enough. So I have my ignition is here, and the starter is there. My handbrake is a button there. My gears are on the door. And uh, on the floor, I have my uh, indicators, which are by there, left and right. And then I have the lights, which is that one there. Uh, this is the driving assistant. I uh, hold on to it and it just stays there. And it's been down so I can drive. And then the, the wipers are automatic. So I just leave it in automatic. It's so important. It's so, so important that disabled people are involved in the designing of assistive technology, I think I can tell literally straight away if a disabled person has been involved in the design or they haven't. So the inclusion of disabled people into the design of whatever accessibility product it is, is so, so important. I was given driving when I was at school. They said to me, oh, it's going to take ages for you to train it, but you need to be able to train it. But you need to spend like three or four hours a day training this piece of tech. When I'm at school, when I'm a teenager at school, spending three or four hours a day talking at a computer for no discernible like, end goal in the sense of I'm not getting marked on that work, I'm not getting, there's no feedback to it, it's just me talking at a machine. That's a lot of energy expended for something that might not work. I think technology definitely has a place. I use it all the time. I, 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 I wouldn't want to be anti-technology because I'm not. It just it can't be the solution to every single problem. And people helping people is, in my opinion, always going to be necessary.